At this stage, I'd like to say a big thank you to, to all of you for turning up. It's a great ride. And also, a special thanks to the people who travel a long way. I see we have leads down there from Bunbury, and there are people who have travelled also past. Oh, yes, and from where are you now, Bustleton? Yes. So it, it's great to see that you make the effort to come up here and attend this fantastic dance expo. And I'm sure that you've all learned a lot so far, and there's a lot more to learn. Our next lecturer is fondly known as the Grand Master of Dance. He's an international coach, adjudicator, and a lecturer. This is a very interesting point. This person has won every major master championship in the world, from junior right through to adult and professional. Please welcome Anthony Hurley. Thank you. Well, you've had a busy day so far, and you're only halfway through. I could have had a lay in this morning. <laughs> okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is wonderful. You know, I've done this two or three times now, this Congress, and it's lovely to see so many of you here. I had certain plans for my lecture, but after I just listened to Peter's lecture, which I thought was absolutely brilliant. I've changed my, slightly changed the approach to my lecture. I want to say a few words first about the preparation. Preparation is not only what you're going to do on the floor. Preparation goes on in here, right? The first thing you've got to believe in is you've got to believe in yourself. Because if you don't believe in yourself, don't expect the judges to believe in you either. So when you step on that floor, I don't care whether you, you are whatever grade you are, you've got to think you're the best. That is what I used to do. People used to say I was arrogant, right, again, but I could see that if I, all the sports people that I looked at, who were so good at their game, they had it. That's what they had. They had belief in themselves. The other thing that I want to repeat, something that Peter said, because it's the one thing that annoys me most about being a coach. When a couple come in, and you say to them, what dance would you like to do? Go, uh, what should we do? Waltz? No, 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 right. And now you're asking the coach to decide what you're going to do. You must come into a lesson with a positive point that you want, right? And something else you say, right? If you take one thing out of a lesson, one thing, that's great. I read some uh, in, a, in a book once about a, a, a professor who lectured throughout the United States. And he said in this book that a student listening to a lecture can only concentrate for 30 minutes. And at the footnote he said, I made a mistake of lecturing to them for three hours. <laughs> so, You've got to, in your lesson, you know, you, if, you've got to work on one thing. It's like, for example, you know, you get someone with a left arm like that, right? So every time they start, you say, what about your left arm? Yeah, and I used to have a student, right, I used to say to him, what about this? He said, oh, I've got that, I've got that. I said, you bloody haven't, <laughs> right? Because you know, every week you come back with the same thing. So he's not, he's not taking it in, right? So those are the things that you've got, because, so many of you possibly, I'm not saying you do, but I, I know it happens because I've been teaching for a couple of years, um, that you all expect your coach to put it right. Now, we are not magicians, right? We can't wave a magic wand and it's going to be there, right? So, it's, we can only help you, but in the end, you are the one who's got to make the change. You get the advice, and anything that we change in dance requires 
muscular memory. You've got to be able to understand that muscular memory because that's what it is. Okay, so I wanted to just compliment Peter on that wonderful lecture, Peter, right? Uh, and highlight because he thinks like I think, right? And I think that's what we've got to do. So sometimes we see things from varying grades of a couple on the floor. And I, sometimes I look at the choreography and I think, what the hell is he doing that for? It doesn't suit him physically. And possibly he hasn't got the tools in his, or her in their tool bag to do it. it you know, so it's best to do the simple things well than the difficult things badly. I think we can all agree with that. Yeah? Now, I have seen major, major championships where a couple have danced a complete basic dance and won the dance. I've seen it in Borum and I've seen it in Latin America. So, if you do everything well enough, you can still be good. Because sometimes, and I'm going to talk about this as well, what is it that I, what I see in dance today, which is our, our sort of a title, and I've made just a few edits. The two dances that I feel are being neglected in their fundamentals. You might think I'm going to say water pot, but no. Tango is the one that is suffering. And Crickston. Because what I don't see enough of is the characterization of the dance, the musicality of the dance, and to remember the choreography should be designed to fit that particular dance and the music. And the one thing that you, nobody does nowadays, because everything is, is routine, partnering skills. A lost art, I'm sorry to say, it's a lost art. So, in I'm sure in, in what is certainly in my day, we practiced in public ballrooms. They were around there, unfortunately. So in many ways, our generation had, had better opportunities than you've got today because all the ballrooms have closed down. And those ballrooms, they had maybe two orchestras playing. Not at the same time, thank God, but you know, they had two orchestras. So we, would, we could dance there. And we learned, and you were sharing the floor with social dancers. So we learned partnering skills, how to dance around the floor and not keep bashing into people. In fact, at the very, very famous Hammersmith Palais in London, which was the mecca of dancing in London in those days, they used to have a guy standing on the side of the floor, and I can remember him now, he was a big guy, so his name was Bill Stern. And if he saw anybody bumping on the floor, you're out. Right? And you were banged. Right? For ungentlemanly conduct on the floor. So, because that, those skills that we, we learned there helped us on the, on the competitive floor because we, we, had, we tried to pride ourselves in never hitting anybody. And that included the judges. <laughs> I'm telling you, at Blackwell I have been hit many times and I can tell you that I've been hit in some very, very unfortunate places. <laughs> So that sort of that brings in floor craft, doesn't it? Right? So if you're doing a set routine, now you know I always judge in the same place at Blackpool. Some people say I've got a lease on that piece of floor. But I stand here and I, it starts with the qualifying rounds and then it gets down to the 48, the 24, the 12, and I've been watching this couple. He does the same thing in the same place all day. Uh, everything goes in the same place. So, that to me is not the best competitive approach because is, is, he, is he listening to the music? Is he, you know, what, is he using all the facilities that are around him? He's just going through a set routine. Okay, he might be doing it really well. And the one thing about most competitors today, especially the, the elite, they are very, very well rehearsed. 
But if I go back to those days that, that I feel that we had a slight advantage over today's dancers, is that when we were dancing with all these social dancers on the floor as well, they used to have a general excuse me session. I bet none of you know what that is, do you? Right. Well, I know, I know the age group right here that does know what it is, right? And that is, you know, you could be dancing around with your partner front and you've got a tap on the shoulder. Excuse me, I, you had to give up your partner and you walk off the floor. That was the general excuse me. So, he used to stand in the centre of the floor and he walked around and thought, whoa, it looks shield. Right. I think I'm going to dance with her. But it, it was great. And they followed. We, okay, we didn't go into advanced routines, but they would follow the, fu you know, the, the fundamentals of the dance. And that is where we got our partnering skills from. Now, when I was a very young amateur, one, one of my coaches, who to me was just unbelievable, was a guy called Victor Barrett. And he danced with a lady called Doreen Freeman, who was an absolute beautiful dancer. And he taught me one thing. He said, whatever you do, whatever you lead, what does the lady follow? Right, so there's a question. What does the lady follow? And there was a silent hush fell over. He followed, she follows the direction of your body weight, assisted with the arms. Now, I don't see that in the competitions today because I know it's a very, very well rehearsed routine. Now, I want to now talk about the dance that I feel that is neglected. Now, and I don't always blame the dancers to couples. So I'll leave it up to your imagination who I really blame. Right. <coughs> right, I'll move on quickly, so I might get thrown out. And probably I've made, I've made those mistakes myself. Right. But, the the actions first, we're not spending enough time on the fundamentals of the dance, whether it be ballroom, Latin, New Vogue, to be able to produce the more advanced. So, in the tango, which I loved, and it was a very, very successful dance for my wife and I, I'm happy to say, uh, it's become over progressive. <coughs> Now, by, even just by listening to the tango music, you can't really be progressive. Now, because if I dance walk in the tango, I want one and two and two and two and three and two and four and two and five. Now, what I see today is this. One, two, three, four, one, two. One, da, di, da, da. First thing you see is rise and fall. Why do you see that? Because I opened my legs. Now look where my weight is. It's not on my left foot and it's not on my right foot. What has that done to my partner? It's pushed her away from me, down, down. So now we start getting the the tension in the top to control the dance. Now, if, could I have a little tango of his, Oli Guapa, please let it. He was a hell of a nice fellow, that Oli Guapa. And all you remember was what I did if I needed to pass it. Right. And that's what I mean. Right. right, now that actually is a personal thing that if I do it, now if I do that, I stand a chance of all the judges saying you can't do that, or that's brilliant. Right. But that's my decision, right. But now, can you put that tango on again, please? Bye. 
I listen to it and you don't. So by listening to it, you actually, you've got to get into the dance more. And this is where I feel the tango today is, is going a little bit off on different tributaries instead of staying on the main, main river. Now, <clears throat> we're going to get up in a bit, we're going to do some tango exercises. Um, choreography should be designed to the music because our pioneers all those years ago they did that they f they designed the figures to fit the music so the music came first the, and the steps came second right but now i feel that the in the effort to impress Usually the dance is overloaded in choreography, and I say that in Latin American as well, Pat, with all respect. Right? The arms are going, everything's going. <laughs> and you sit there, so you, you get the muse, right? And I'll tell you what, one year, okay, judging in my little corner in Blackpool, and you know, we, we all spend a lot of money on our clothes to judge Blackpool. And I had this beautiful dinner jacket with velvet lapels and I'm standing there and it was in the time when it was in vogue in the Latin that everything you finished went suck! Yeah. <laughs> this verbal thing, it's a bit like the watching the tennis now there. <laughs> anyway, I'm standing there and this girl comes out of this action and she thrusts her crush at me and she goes suck! <laughs> All this is alive, right? <laughs> Dry penis couldn't get it out, so I gave it to the guy who used to do my garden. And one morning I pulled the curtains back and I said to my wife, come and have a look at this. She said, what's my wife? I said, see, look what the best dressed gardener in Canada is doing. <laughs> 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 anyway, right, now, I want you now please to come onto the floor. With your partners, of course. <laughs> and the first thing I want to do is this. When you buy a new car, or you, if it's not new, you, you buy a second hand one or whatever, or a third hand, right, usually you've got to adjust the seat to suit you, right? Just far enough forward. You know, backrest, running, right? You get, so you look into a comfortable position. It's no different when we dance. So you've got to get into a comfortable position and the position that actually begins the story of the tango. Now I see some funny things going on in tango. Right, would you just hold that microphone for me, please? Now, 
how wide should your feet be whenever you're in promenade position? Right. This is the this is the popular action. Right. All the girls are diagonally forward or diagonally back. Then they do the promenade right. because they've got to move that foot. So come here, my darling. Right, we're going to be in promenade position. Perfect. Look at that. See where our toe is pointing? See our base? Right. So now when we take it, it's a side step, isn't it? Don't point your toe. Point your toe. Over there. Slow. Go quick, quick, slow. Right. Now what happens normally is this. The boys eat the lead. I feel I'm born in the saddle. <laughs> That, you see, is the most unattractive thing. Now, what happens from here? We get what we call, I call the lurch. Ah! Right? Now, you can see my weight's gone up. I've left my right leg and my hip in the part this way. She can't get through. So what happens? She tries to make space to come through. So now we get this feeling that the girl is turned. Right? But if we've done that correctly, from there, we've got our feet correctly, right? I get that knee through early, go quick, quick, slow. But if I've done that, I have finished where I, 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 I should now have finished my walk, right? But that, you can see that is actually stopping the lady from coming through. But if I do that, yeah? So these are the things that I see today. You know, it, it's easy to, to, to actually lecture on the things you don't like and the things you do like, right? Because you know you, we base you know whatever we what we do here is what we base our adjudication on, right? So can we now take hold of our partners? Uh, now we're going to be a bit, a bit crowded, but so let's spread out a little bit. But I would like you all, the boys, to face the harbour over there, <laughs> or the, I should have said the marina, shouldn't I? That's the harbour. That's the marina, right? Okay, now let me see you first. Pam, put Peter down. And he said that's a phone in my pocket. Yeah, thought you'd like a chance. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right, can I see you take up hold, please? Uh huh. Right. Now, at this moment in time, well, okay, just relax. Actually, there was one or two very good ones there. And there, were, there were a few uh, that were a bit off track. But, so now, if, I, if I'm there and I get into that position, right? Look at my angle, the angle of my body. I'm not square. I'm there. So when I walk, every left foot forward walk and dancing tango is in CBMP. Right, so how can you be in CBMP if you're square? Right. So here is a little exercise for you. This is, you'll find the perfect position. Right, arms extended, palm to palm. Make your contact, invite your partner to have that little turn and ask her to transfer weight to her left foot as you transfer to the right foot. Now place your arms in what position? I'm in CBMP. Right side lead. But if I do, if I just if I just start square like this, I'm not in CBMP, and my partner will get pushed, and your leg tracking will be out. Being my leg tracking on the second walk, there I want my foot underneath this lovely little bottom, so that I'm supporting the base. Right? And what makes it really lovely, I I, I like to just graze inside time. <laughs> well, at my age, I've got to get some enjoyment. <laughs> right, so one and two. Now, if I use that, what I call the lurch method, I don't get that. Because I'm, I'm accelerating Christina so fast away from me, but to do the lead, I'm going to have to rein her in. Yeah? So can we try that exercise? You've got enough space. Right. right, palm to palm. 
Okay? Now make, just move your bodies up to touch your partners. Okay? Now, with a slight turn to the left, boys, invite your partner to apply her weight to her left foot, your right foot, and bottom. Now put your arms around her. Good. Now dance your two walks and stop. And walk, walk. Yeah, what comes after two and three? I only said two. <laughs> Okay, now can you feel that position now that if you've got the foot right underneath the lady's base? Okay? Yeah. Right? That's fine. Alright, okay, now if you want to do a leap from there you can, can't you? Go. Rack. Alright. So that was good. Okay, can we go back and do that again, please? Right. Arms extended, palm to palm. Make your light body contact. Transfer weight, inviting your partner to do the same, settling into your leg. Right, place the arm around her. Right, and here we go. And one, pop, 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 and your butt. Right, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, now, why does the man, or why should, I should say, because not everyone's doing this, why should the man's right arm go a little further around the lady's back in tango? Sorry? Well, you're pretty, you're pretty well there, yeah, yeah. It comes from that uh, an original body position. Yeah? So, if I've done, if I've done this exercise from here, sorry, and I step Okay, so let's, so these are the things that, okay, you want to dance, you want it to a successful tango, you've got to, you've got to look like you're going to do a tango, all right? Okay, so let's take up our hold. Ready? Sorry? Ready, okay, invite your girls. Oh, I know, I'm sorry, there was one important thing I've missed out here, which I see some of you doing. Uh, Christina, I'll take you from here, hold that on. Now the difference is, if I put the base of my spine down, I'm sitting down. Now take my advice boys, never sit down, girls, never sit down in tango, sit up. Doesn't matter how much I flex my knees, I'm going to sit up. Not under, up. Right? But if I sit down, right, it's very difficult for the girl now to get the right position. She's a liability now. Right. Always put your girls in first class. You know Glen Tierney, of course, don't you? <laughs> right? When, when he was in England as an amateur, I was teaching him. And I used to say to Glen, I said, you've got to put, you, when you take hold of a girl, I said, you've got to put her in first class. And you know, a couple of weeks ago, Anne Marie, his, his partner, put on Facebook, reminding him of those lessons. And then I saw a picture of him. He was in the Philippines with these two gorgeous Philippine girls on each side of the photograph. So I had to write, 
I hope you're putting your Filipinos in first class, Jess. <laughs> so, think about that one. The girls, and that's something else that I want to absolutely repeat what Peter said. When you're practicing, both of you, both of you want to do your best. Right? And the more you argue or you fight about it, it gets worse. Doesn't it now? Right. <laughs> okay, right. So, don't push her. If you want the best out of your partner, treat her with respect and you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll get much more out of her. Ready? Here we go. Take up your position. Settle. Arms around. Right? Okay. Ready, and one, and two, and crack, stop. Do a proper now if you can. Slow, quick, quick, slow. Right, okay, good. Okay, right. Now, having, having now taken up your hold several times now with this, Having taken up your hold now several times with this practice exercise, has it improved the feel between you? Yes. yes. Has it improved that the sensitivity? Right. Now, for me as well in dance and especially in tango, my hands are very important, not only to me, but to my partner. Now, I have seen some funny hands. Although you're getting your arm a little further around now, I see this. Your fingers are pointing off the partner, right? Yes, you. Yeah, sure. That's you. Right. See, I see this. Now, that's what we call rigid digits. <laughs> right? There's no sensibility in there. Right? Now, what I used to do in practice is I used to start from there and I used to feel the shape of her back until my hand was fitting her back. Now, if you think about your hand, if you dip up a glass, your hand takes the shape of the glass, doesn't it? If I want to feel your shoulder, my hand feels that, okay? If I want to do that, my hand shapes to what it's holding, even if I want to do that, okay? My hand will curve, right? So, boys, when you put your hand on your back, you, you know, it's not like you go into a shop and say, look, I, I've got to practice and I'll give you another nine hand, will you? Right? You've got to find that this hand is special to your partner. So you can't have it off like that. Because when you do anything that opens or Spanish drags like that, the pressure on the heel of the hand is going to give her problems. Right? So please remember, now if you look at that arm there, right, it's like there's a curve from my elbow to my fingertips. Now if I bring that down, right, now let me hold another girl now. Can I, can I hold you now? Right? Right, so if I put it around you there, right, it's a new back, different back. And so I've got to adjust, right? So now I feel I've got a good connection without any pressure. I do my lead. Okay? Now don't move. Would you walk away from me, don't you? Look now. Now my partner is not that big, but I have allowed her the space at the top to produce. So space is always made at the top, never at the bottom, right? You, you know, if you've got your, your hips back there, or you've got what I call the, the, the snooker hip, right? And I know, I've, I've seen people teach that, when you've got to, you've got to get that in your pocket, right? I would only do that if I was bent over a snooker table. Right. Okay, so now think about that hand, right? Ready? Start with your practice position. Okay, now take hold, relax into that, all right? No, nothing, there hasn't got to be a stiff joint anywhere in your bodies, all right? Okay, right, you've got better sensitivity here in your fingers, all right, it's looking pretty good. Okay, here we go, and a walk, a walk, a quick, quick, slow, off, 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 right, then, could I have a little tango music, please? <laughs> now, 
21 to 2 weeks. Right? Come back to us and Henry is it? Uh, I don't feel that. Okay, kick it out. If you don't feel it, right, that's what the whole point. What I tried to, what I used to try to do is the first thing I would look at is the couple. What are their what's the, the physical look of the couple? Right? Now, you know, if you've got somebody that's you know pretty big, I'd never give him the left side action, because he's gonna look like a bloody elephant. Right? So things like that. So you know, make sure you're doing the things that you feel you do well. If you feel good, you'll dance it good. All right? Okay, folks, thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Thank you very much for